At YVO we receive a lot of Yellowstone super eruption, what if, and when questions, even though it is the least likely scenario for future volcanic activity. News articles, websites, and videos often exaggerate rare events, but ignore the real dangers that may occur in a person's life. At YVO we receive a lot of Yellowstone super eruption, what if, and when questions, even though it is the least likely scenario for future volcanic activity. News articles, websites, and videos often exaggerate rare events, but ignore the real dangers that may occur in a person's life. So here, right now, we are going to turn this around and discuss geological hazard scenarios in Yellowstone, from most likely to least likely. Excelsior Giza erupts as a violent hydrothermal explosion. Source for use, public domain. Visit Medium for details. Excelsior Giza erupted in a series of powerful hydrothermal explosions in the 1880s and early 1890s, one of these eruptions is shown in a color postcard made from a photograph. This is the largest event to occur in the Yellowstone region in history. Original photo by F. J. Haynes, 1888, date on postcard is incorrect. Public domain. Hydrothermal explosions are Yellowstone's most likely volcanic hazard. If there is no warning, thermal features can erupt as geysers that throw rocks and dig shallow craters. Smaller eruptions occur more frequently and can impact areas tens of feet in diameter, while smaller and larger eruptions can hurl hot water and rock up to several thousand feet. On average, one hydrothermal explosion occurs every two years in Yellowstone. Because these events are usually minor and can occur at any time, including when few visitors are present, the likelihood of injury to individuals can be reduced. A famous example is the Pork Chop Geyser explosion in 1989 in the Norris Geyser Basin. Do you know? Hot springs have injured or killed more people in Yellowstone than wildlife encounters. Paths and paths are created to protect visitors and climbing beyond the boardwalk is extremely dangerous, the hot springs underlie much of the thin, easily breakable crust around the hot springs. Damage from a large earthquake, in the range of 7 on the Richter scale, ranks second in Yellowstone's most likely hazards. As discussed last week, there are many faults on the Yellowstone Plateau. Several thousand earthquakes occur every year during the 1959 M7.3 Lake Hebgen event, but 99% of them are magnitude 2 or lower and cannot be detected by humans. Earthquakes within the caldera reach a maximum magnitude of 6 due to the nature of the faults and rocks. However, outside the caldera, regional faults associated with the expansion of the basin and range are capable of generating large earthquakes, such as the Great Earthquake. Large earthquakes like this may occur once or twice a century, but like all geological hazards, they do not occur on Schedule. Third is Pitchstone Plateau 3, 140 miles 3, which will fill the AT&T Dallas Cowboy Stadium 200,000 times. Magma is the cause of the hazard lava flows. Nearly all of Yellowstone's several dozen magma-producing eruptions in the past have been lava flows punctuated by a few eruptions of volcanic ash. Rhyolite lava flows are some of the most massive on Earth, they reach up to 30 kilometers, 19 miles, from their source vent and can be over 400 m, 1,300 feet, or as tall as the Empire State Building in thickness. Eruptions occur in groups, clustered in time, separated by non-eruptive periods. The most recent volcanic eruption in Yellowstone was a lava flow that formed 70,000 years ago. Since the last of super eruption, rhyolite lava has filled most of the Yellowstone caldera, its total flow volume is about 600 kilometers. If future volcanic activity at Yellowstone causes an eruption, it would likely result in lava flows or, less likely, moderate ashfall. However, we are currently in an eruption lull, and history tells us that these types of eruptions are clustered events. Additionally, Current monitoring data shows volcanic activity in Yellowstone is not increasing. Of all the possible volcanic hazard scenarios in Yellowstone, by far the least likely scenario includes a major caldera forming eruption. This is of course the worst case scenario for Yellowstone, but the chances of this happening in our lifetime are, literally, one in a million. Sometime in the future, a super eruption may occur elsewhere on Earth. 
but we may have to wait tens of thousands of years before a similar event occurs again worldwide, and it is possible that a super eruption will never occur again in Yellowstone. We'll stop there. At YVO, we hear from people who are literally losing sleep over concerns about a possible super eruption. However, this limited perspective doesn't paint a bigger picture of the dangers at Yellowstone. The one event most people know about, the Big Bang, is also by far the least likely event to occur. Even moderate lava flows or ash eruptions are unlikely. On the scale of human life, the most likely dangers are small hydrothermal explosions, such as the Air Spring Eruption Hydrothermal Explosion in September 2018, or strong earthquakes, such as the M7.3 Hebgen Lake event of 1959. Yellowstone's spectrum of activity is much more complex than just a powerful eruption which rarely happens, 